welcome to the Jet Setter Show, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. Enjoy and learn from a variety of experts on topics ranging from upscale travel at wholesale prices to retiring overseas, to global real estate and business opportunities, to tax havens and expatriate opportunities. You'll get great ideas on unique cultures, causes, and cruise vacations. Whether you're wealthy or just want to live a wealthy lifestyle, The Jet Setter Show is for you. Here's your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to The Jet Setter Show. This is Jason Hartman, your host, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. I think you'll enjoy the interview we have for you today, and we will be back with that in less than 60 seconds here on The Jet Setter Show. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn about investing in and managing income properties for college students, there's a show for that. If you want to learn how to get noticed online and in social media, there's a show for that. If you want to know how to save on life's largest expense, there's a show for that. And if you'd like to know about America's crime of the century, there's even a show for that. Yep, there's a show for just about anything, only from jasonhartman.com. Or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. It's my pleasure to welcome Andrea Warrock to the show. She is a nationally recognized consumer and money-saving expert. She's been featured on Good Morning America, NBC's Today Show, The Dr. Oz Show, and several other media outlets. And today, I wanted to talk about her expertise in saving money on travel, and then also we'll talk about saving money in general, and just how we can all be smarter consumers as well. But first, let's dive into the travel subject. Andrea, welcome. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Well, good. Fantastic to have you on the show today. And you talk about saving money and just being a better consumer in general. But since sequestration is in the news nowadays, I just wanted to have you touch on, you know, is there anything that the FAA is doing because of the sequestration issue that is affecting travelers, maybe longer lines at TSA or or anything else? Well, I think one of the biggest speculations was that since there were going to be budget cuts that affected the National Air Traffic Control Association, or excuse me, the the Federal Aviation Administration, that meant that there might be fewer employees, so there needs to be less airplanes actually in the air and less people on the ground to navigate those planes when they're landing, so that means fewer flights more demand, and that could be an increase in flight cost over time. Yeah, and of course, that could affect how things run at the airport, maybe longer lines, uh, you need to get there sooner. So there's a ton ton of different ways that it is going to affect consumers, but I would say flight prices are the ones that are going to hit you the hardest. Well, you know, I can tell you one effect, and I'm not sure this was actually due to sequestration, but I was coming back from Central America recently on a trip, and we landed in, gosh, was it Houston or Dallas? I believe it was Dallas, and landed in Dallas, had to go through customs, and having been to 64 countries, many of them many times, and having a lot of experience traveling, that was the longest customs line I ever waited on. They had a, wow. they, they had a whole bunch of booths, but only three of them were open. There were only three customs agents there. And upon complaining about it, they said it was because of the budget cuts, but I don't know if that's exactly true or not. Right. Well, I mean, that is something that you may experience. Unfortunately, with budget cuts, it means fewer employees. So, um, and, you know, they're not going to really let up on the security. So it just means you have to wait longer. Yeah, really amazing. Let's talk about some ways that people can uh, reduce the cost of airfare. You have kind of 11 tips, and I don't know if we should share them all, but, you know, yeah, just kind of well, go through them. Yeah, I can them combine some of the yeah. tips. Okay. Yes. So the first one we're talking about looking for airfare, it really comes down to being flexible. As you probably know, as a, a frequent traveler, the day that you actually fly out, usually midweek, is going to offer you much less expensive airfare. So when you're planning your vacation, instead of leaving on a Friday night, try to head out on a Tuesday or Wednesday. You'll definitely find cheaper 
airfare that way and then come back on a Saturday or then come back the following Tuesday or Wednesday. Also, waking up early might get you a cheaper airfare. No one wants to get up at 4 a.m. to catch that 6 a.m. flight, but usually those first flights out are going to be the least expensive. And also, you'll find that uh, flights during dinner time or lunch time are generally a little bit lower than the other peak travel times of the day. Now, yeah, I, I've definitely found that. You know, I hate those early flights. They stress me out too much. But, you know, when you're going from the West Coast to back East, it's really the only way to go because it just, by right. the time you lose three hours, it, it, it's evening by the time you get there, no matter what. What about booking, though? You know, I've heard that there are tricks to booking, like booking on Tuesdays. That's the best time yes. to buy a ticket online. Is that true? So according to faircompare.com, they did a ton of surveys and analysis and they found that booking at 3 p.m. specifically Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday afternoons is your best chance to find the cheapest airfare. Now, I don't necessarily say you always have to wait for that specific time. I generally find that Tuesday, Wednesdays, and sometimes even Thursdays, you have that same pool of low-cost flights. So I recommend shopping and booking during the midweek. Oftentimes what's happened to me is that I'll see prices jump over the weekend, and then they'll go back down afterwards. So if you're worried about missing out on a flight, it's selling out, or that it's going to increase even further, if you book it, then you may want to track it on yapta.com, and they will alert you if that specific itinerary, that same seat, that same flight, the same times and everything drops in price, then you'll be able to go back to the airline and request a, qu a credit. Well, we actually had, I, I believe it was the founder of Yapta on the show before, and that's a really interesting website, Yapta. What they do is if the fare reduces, they'll get you get you the difference back. But, you know, I right. can't imagine as, because of the way time works, <laughs> you know, you book on uh, a certain date and then you move only closer to the flight, It doesn't it really always get more expensive? I mean... Yeah, interestingly, not, only, not always does that happen. Actually, I just booked tickets for my honeymoon coming up this September to South Africa. And it's what six. That, that's a long flight. Out. I've done that one. <laughs> Boy, right. that is the longest <laughs> flight on the planet. I think. I'm I'm a little bit scared, but no. But when I was researching flights, I found pretty reasonable prices, and I was waiting and waiting to get everything confirmed and booked and make sure I had some, you know, vacation time planned and whatnot. And then the longer I waited, I kind I started the prices weren't fluctuating, and then all of a sudden they started creeping up ten, twenty, thirty dollars. So I started to worry. And it was a Saturday, and I finally booked it. The price, the flight that I wanted to book through Amer or African Airlines uh, was no longer available. It was the cheapest one available. And then I started to track it on Yapta. I, anyway, booked through United at a higher price, then got an email from Yapta that the original flight I wanted was actually reduced. So, you know, it definitely timing is a non-issue, especially when you're booking months in advance. They actually find that the best time to book is within two months of your actual departure date, that's when you'll find the lowest prices. So sometimes it actually waits to, uh, it pays to wait to book. So so you're saying two months advance is the best deal? So six, the real sweet spot with domestic travel would be six weeks. If you're booking six weeks in advance, you're probably going to find some of the best deals. Any later, they may start creeping up. Any earlier, and they may not be reduced. So, uh, But of course, if you kind of start researching prices two, three to two months before, you'll have a general idea of what it costs, and then you could track those flights on NAFTA. So when it does drop, you'll know to jump on it right away. Okay, good. What else? So, you know, we talk about what the best time to uh, buy flights, but when you're also searching online, the airline industry is one of the most common industries to use something called dynamic pricing, where they track your purchase and browsing histories, and they'll set and determine different prices based on the information you're computer sending to those analytical tools those websites are using. So what I would recommend is anytime you're searching for airfare, clear your browsing history, clear your cookies. You could do that from your internet options and then also, you know, use different IP address. One time I was looking at my computer, the price has jumped $50. So I booked through my phone and used my Verizon data plan, which was a completely different browser, different browsing history. And I was able to book the lower price. So, so, so really, I mean, isn't that kind of crooked? What did the, what do you call that? What is the name for that again? That you said. They call that dynamic pricing. But but that's not dynamic pricing. It's remembering who looked before and essentially feeding that person a higher fare because they know they need to go. 
That that's just unbelievable. Right, and it's also and also they right. So the longer you're searching, they see that you're inevitably interested and in like most likely to purchase those tickets. And so, yeah, it, it is kind of unfortunate how that pricing strategy works. So just being aware of it, though, and again, tracking prices and clearing your browsing history will help you find the better deals. All right. And you've got a few other tips there. Travel midweek. You mentioned that. So traveling midweek, which we talked about. And then also, I always recommend searching one-way airfare. Oftentimes, I, I'm based in California. I fly back to New York for media, and that's where I'm from. So my family is there. My friends are there. And so I travel back nearly every other month, it seems. And I find that although sometimes round-trip deals can be really great, I found plenty of better one-way offers. Um, especially when you're booking through sites like Travelocity. They have restricted restricted round-trip airfare deals, and sometimes they don't offer the best times or flight options when you book round-trip. So sometimes I'll book a one-way through Travelocity, and then other times I'll look at Jet, uh, JetBlue or Virgin, or um, Southwest to see what one-way options they have that may be a better deal. So sometimes that actually nets you a lower cost there. Right, yeah. Okay, and and then you also mentioned uh, don't check bags, you know, unless you're flying on one of the very few airlines that include that, like Southwest. You're right, but I find Southwest fares to be, frankly, higher. I do like Southwest as an airline. You know, I just find that the whole attitude on the plane is better <laughs> of, the, of the staff. But their prices are high. It's just funny, Andrea, how a brand can be built on the idea of a low price. And ultimately, they're, they're not low at all. I, I mean, you can disagree with me if you want, but you can just get a better deal on, on Hotwire most of the time, I find. Yeah, you know, it all depends about researching and looking out for those deals. I have found that Southwest in some different trips, like when I recently went from LAX to Denver, that we had a 30% off discount. So it was incredibly cheap and we were going skiing. So we had two bags each and they were oversized bags and they did not charge for either of those bags. So had we been going on a different airline that even if they had cost the same, the base fare, we would have ended up paying $50 extra each just to check our bags or more because it was an oversized bag. So it all depends on how many bags you're checking and where you're going. But sometimes they're cheaper, and you're right. Sometimes you might find a better deal on United or American or Delta. So it all all comes down to, to researching and comparing deals. And that's why I love using sites like Kayak.com, which helps you compare the offers somewhat instantly um, and takes a lot of the legwork out of going from website to website. But when I do find a flight that I like, I'll go directly to the airline's website to see if they had it available for the same price. This way, if I do make any changes or cancellations or whatnot, there's a lot less hassle of going through a third-party site. And what website do you actually use most of the time to buy your tickets? You know, I because I spend so much time comparing prices and looking at flights, it all depends on where I find it. I do use Southwest a lot for various short trips. I also have recently um, received a United uh, My Explore, Mileage Explorer credit card from Chase. So I'm using United more now because I get double points for purchases made directly through United's website. Plus, I'll earn all the miles for the airfare, and I get a free check bag um, plus other perks through the card. So when it comes to um, looking for an airline-specific credit card, there are some good deals to be had. We'll be back in just a minute. You know, sometimes I think of Jason Hartman as a walking encyclopedia on the subject of creating wealth. Well, you're probably not far off from the truth, Penny, because Jason actually has a three-book set on creating wealth that comes with 60 digital download audios. Yes, Jason has that unique ability to make you understand investing the way it should be. It's a world where anything less than 26% annual return is disappointing. I love how he actually shows us how we can be excited about these scary times and exploit the incredible opportunities this present economy has afforded us. We can pick local markets untouched by the economic downturn, exploit packaged commodities investing, and achieve exceptional returns safely and securely. I also like how he teaches you to protect the equity in your home before it disappears and how to outsource your debt obligations to the government. And the entire set of advanced strategies for wealth creation 
is being offered at a savings of $94. That's right. And to get your Creating Wealth Encyclopedia series, complete with over 60 hours of audio and three books, just go to jasonhartman.com forward slash store. If you want to be able to sit back and collect checks every month, just like a banker, Jason's Creating Wealth Encyclopedia series is for you. This is all so hard to keep track of that I, I begin to wonder about the law of diminishing return as to whether it's worth the time to spend on this, especially if someone is self-employed. They can probably make more money in their business than they can save 80 or 150 bucks on an airfare. Now, if it's an international trip, that may well be another matter because the prices do vary a lot more when you get into right. the bigger ticket trips. The, the other thing I want to ask you is what about flying business and first class and flying open jaw? Now, open jaw just means you fly into one city, you maybe visit some other cities and fly out of another city. This is commonly done on European or South American right. trips. They're very handy because why go back to the city in which you started if you want to tour around? So I, I think there's two of the big challenges that travelers have have, Andrea, is if they want to fly business or first class, where is the best place to do that in terms of which website uh, and how to do it and how to get a deal? Because those prices are so much higher. It's just right. sometimes I just think, look, you know, I can afford it, but I just don't want the hassle. It's just not worth it. And, and then the open jaw problem when you're planning, a, when you want to do a European tour, that gets really complex. Right. So you're right. I mean, it takes a lot of planning to decide where you're flying in and where you're flying out. And then you want to make sure that your schedule, that your schedule really stays that way. And I know that when I was traveling, perhaps, perhaps I wanted to go visit another city, but I really couldn't get off my timeline and my route because I was departing and heading back from a certain location. Um, however, in those circumstances, I find that usually booking a multi-city destination round trip ticket is going to get you the best price. When I'm flying, when you're flying international and you book one way ticket, it always seems the price is cost just the same as a round trip airfare. So if you book two one ways, you're going to pay double the price. So I always say to book some multi destination, and yeah, it would take some planning ahead of time to make sure that you uh, you know which route you're going to be going. So for instance, I'm going to South America. I'm flying into Cape Town and heading out of Johannesburg. The great part about it is that it was actually cheaper to do so because the flight I was taking was connecting through Johannesburg in the first instance. So I kind of remove the extra mileage by flying out of Johannesburg and backtracking. And so that saves a little bit off the total airfare. And do you have a website that you like for open jaw or I mean, multi-city travel? I always, you know, and I don't know if this, if other people would agree with me, but I always recommend using sites like Travelocity. It does help to kind of get a baseline idea of all the airfare options and airlines. But I also find that they don't list every single airline that is operating to those countries or cities from the U.S. So perhaps just doing a little bit of research uh, regarding which airlines travel to and from the city that you are going to be departing from. And then also compare air, our airports around you. Perhaps there's an international, two international airports that you could choose from. Perhaps there's one that's a little bit closer, maybe only 30 minutes of a drive. Maybe there's another one that's an hour and a half or two hours that you could get a bus or have a friend drop you off that gets you a better deal. So definitely compare airports as well. And any thoughts on the business class or first class question? Well, the interesting part with first class is that sometimes you can actually find a better deal on last minute first class trips than business class because those first class fees, if they don't fill them up, they do want to still sell them. Now, the, it's kind of hard to determine what is first class when you're shopping online through sites like Travelocity and whatnot. But if you call the airline directly or book through the airline website directly, you could see what types of last minute offers they may have available. And also when you're flying first class, usually, or excuse me, business class, you'll notice that the price is peak for business class on Mondays and Fridays. That's the busy time for business travelers um, because most people who are away for work will don't care how much their company is going to spend to send them back on Friday because they want to be home with their family and friends. So traveling back on a Saturday or Sunday via business class may get you better deals. All right. And any particular website for business or first class or just that, that advice regardless of the website you use? Right. Yeah. I don't have any specific websites that I use, but I 
for those specifically, but I kind of compare with kayak, with travelocity and orbits to see what the baseline offers are. And then I go back and compare with the airlines themselves. So it is a little bit of legwork to, to research, but sometimes it's worth your time because you can save a bundle. Sure, sure. The last thing I wanted to ask you, Andrea, is if you've heard of a website called Flight Fox, I found this to be a pretty interesting business model. I tried to use it a couple times, just didn't quite get a trip together on it. But are you familiar with Flight Fox? No, I haven't heard about oh, it. Oh, you'll, you'll, you'll like this. Uh, I'm giving you a tip. <laughs> you, yeah. It, it's, it's a pretty I'm neat business model. I'm looking it up model. right now. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll like it. What it is is basically a, uh, a website where you can go and you can list where you want to go. And usually it's better for maybe a more complex international travel, open jaw, multi-city type stuff, and, and then maybe business and first class too. And, and what you do is you list all of your goals there, your travel goals, and then you pay a a certain amount of money, uh, maybe like 25 or 45 or $65. And people from all around the world who are not necessarily, probably most of the time, not travel agents, just regular people that want to make a few bucks working out of their homes, you're, you're sort of crowdsourcing the best deal. And they will look up and they will spend all the time surfing the different websites and finding the best deal. And you only award the money to one winner, the trip that you ultimately pick. The, kind of one of the tricks about it, though, is you've got to book it right away because it's always changing so fast. Right. So whoever you, whichever flight you book, you essentially are then paying for that person's service that 25 or whatever that fee might be. That is so incredibly interesting. It's I a think very innovative more, model, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we're seeing different websites like this popping up, and not specifically to travel. I think this is completely unique, but there's a web- website that, remi- that reminds me of this called taskrabbit.com where people post various the odd task, jobs yeah, they need right. help with. Yeah, and so you can, uh, if you need to make a couple of extra bucks to help cover your internet or cable bill or maybe some groceries, you can help someone go gro- grocery shopping, put together IKEA furniture, help with an event. There's tons of those uh, odd jobs available. So it's interesting how through social media and these websites, people are offering new ways to make some extra cash on the side and making your life a little bit easier. Yeah, the whole concept of crowdsourcing. It's a pretty pretty neat world we live in. Andrea, give out your website if you would. Sure. If you visit me at andreawarock.com, which is A-N-D-R-E-A-W-O-R-O-C-H dot com. Uh, I post various tips there and have all my recent media interviews where I'm sharing very helpful shopping and personal finance advice. Uh huh. Fantastic. And just before you go, can you give us a couple of general consumer and shopping tips? Just any yeah. any any quick tips that you know, kind of like your hottest tips that you have. Just a couple of those, real quick, before you go. Just in general, not about travel. Yes, of course. So one of the first things I'm going to talk about is when you're getting your tax refunds this spring, don't blow it on a shopping trip or a non- necessary expensive dinner out just to celebrate your newfound fortune. I really recommend that everybody have an emergency savings account. So whether you've started one but haven't been contributing to it or you have no money put aside, you want to aim to have six to nine months of living expenses saved up for those unpredictable instances like a car accident or maybe a expensive home repair issue, maybe medical emergency or even job loss. And having that money set aside will keep you financially healthy, keep you and your family um, at peace of mind knowing that you have something to protect you. But then when it comes to shopping, I always recommend using coupons. These days, retailers offer coupons for everything. You can find coupons for the grocery store on your cell phone using coupon Sherpa mobile app. You can also find coupons for retailers through that app used for stores like Macy's or Dick's Sporting Goods. And those apps can see, or that app can save you anywhere from 10 to 20% on the shopping trip. So, you know, spending just one minute looking for a discount can help you save a lot. And then I always suggest shopping with a list and shopping less frequently because we all uh, make impulse purchases and that can really eat into our budget. In fact, the grocery store, I recently read, Uh, report that they make 50% of their profit on people's impulse purchases. So, you know, keep that in mind the next time you're throwing in unnecessary items that aren't on your shopping list. 
and you will definitely be able to save a lot of money over time. Fantastic. Well, good. Well, thanks for joining us today. And folks, happy shopping. Save yourself some money. As, as Ben Franklin said, a penny saved is a penny earned. The only, and it's, it's very true, the only thing I want to say about it is don't become too compulsive and obsessive about this, that it takes away time from what's really important in life or business. You know, maybe you can make more rather than searching around for deals. But to do it and be smart and not overpay, it's just prudent. It just makes sense. So Andrea, thank you for sharing some of these great tips with us today. Exactly. Thank you so much for having me. This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company, all rights reserved. For distribution or publication rights and media interviews, please visit www.hartmanmedia.com or email media at hartmanmedia.com. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and the host is acting on behalf of Platinum Properties Investor Network, Inc., exclusively.